Okay, this is a video response to Renee's questions. And um, my video camera is jiggling because somebody's leaning against it. Anyways, um, first of all, let me see if I can remember all the questions you asked. Shroud. Oh, by the way, he's VAT, not VAT or whatever you were saying. Like a vat of oil. He's kind of like that. Anyways, um, no, there's not hundreds of shroud. That would be just silly and people would be getting sick all the time. Um, I want to say at any given time, there's probably anywhere from maybe a hundred in the game total, if that. Um, and they're, they're probably not as prominent as you might think. And I have a feeling that that marks people and then takes marks away depending upon the need and what he feels the balance of the world is suffering or, you know, whatever you're, you want to call that. If he thinks that there's a lot of stupid, useless humans in the world, he's going to mark a whole bunch of people and leave it to the smart ones to uh, eventually pick off all the marked. If the humans go first or the Azur or, you know, whoever we're talking about, the Ethereans or whatever, then you're going to have the, the um, blighted people basically end up taking care of themselves because if they don't move around, then they're going to cause the situation that's going on in Zeltiva. People are going to realize that this is not a natural cause and eventually, you know, hunters are going to close in on them and they're going to be found. The other thing is that because they have to move around so much, they have to brave the wilderness in between cities and that is a sort of selection process in itself. So you could think of that as kind of brilliant <laughs> because sure, he gives marks, but there's a lot of ways that people that are marked can get taken out and because they have to move, they're more vulnerable. I mean, granted, all the PCs that I know of are not like stationary PCs, it seems like. There's a few, but everybody creates a PC and wants to travel around and we just go, ah, don't travel because it's really dangerous. And in a realistic fantasy environment with Mizahar in consideration, people would stay in one place and mail would be slow and um, situations like that. But you know, we don't have a natural situation like that. We have people that want to just adventure all over the place because they get bored in one city and they think they've seen it all and done it all and then they move to a different city. Well, those are PCs. In terms of the game, you have NPCs and NPCs really need to be stationary for the most part. And when you have, we've got kitties sneaking up, when you have um, characters that are forced to move around, that means they have jobs that allow them to travel. So I would imagine that the people that bring the mail, you know, because there's a lot of courier situations where people are sending letters back and forth. There's obviously a mail system that gets, you know, that taken care of. I imagine that people who are members of the Shroud are sailors because they get to stay on a ship. Crew changes on ship a lot. They get docked into a port and then they can go sort of run around that city for a while. They could jump ship and, you know, hire on with a different crew and stay in a city for a couple, you know, seasons. Although that's really not a good idea. Um, when you're a lower level blight, you could probably stay a season or two someplace and it wouldn't, wouldn't be that bad. Um, you know, if you lived in the same spot, your neighbors would start getting sick, obviously. And, um, but one dude walking around a city like Silerus isn't going to do much damage in a season because there's so many people he comes in contact with and how many, what, what length of the duration of the contact is that going to be? Is he going to talk to a shopkeeper five minutes and make him sick? No. Um, if that shopkeeper lives like within a couple hundred feet of him, then there is an issue there. But if a person has a couple of marks and he starts staying in a city, then that's a whole different story. You know, your range of influence and your duration of influence increase dramatically. So the higher you get in terms of that's, you know, echelon, then 
you have an issue and you have to move quicker. So um, in terms of income, you're on your own. You have to find a job that suits your lifestyle. Um, be it mercenary work where you're traveling around. Caravan guard is a good one. Uh, courier or messenger, mail carrier type of a situation is a good one. Sailor is a good situation. A wilderness guide is a good situation. Um, there's an infinite number of jobs. I mean, we could probably play name that job and, you know, start a thread and have people probably within an hour name a hundred jobs that somebody could do that they could actually have a blight gnosis and not have problems. Um, I've role played lots of shroud before as NPCs, and um, I particularly like picking on Leo <laughs> with shroud. Um, one of my favorite shroud scenarios was. Um, Silerus, the Shroud get together periodically and they kind of exchange information and ideas. And it's kind of like a Shroud convention. And when they do, like, they tend to be nefarious individuals and a little bit rougher around the edges. I'm sure Renme is more um, what you would consider educated and a little bit more suave than a lot of the Shroud are. But the Shroud that Leo encountered were having a gathering and they thought it would be lots of fun to develop a new drug and they were drugging people in the city and they tested it out they opened a club and they tested it out on children and it would make the children like incredibly violent and then they put them in rings and have them fight to the death and they thought it was really good fun and evidently other people thought it was good fun too because this sort of underground children's fight club took off and leo and his buddy had to go in there and well, his buddies, his triad, had to go in there and clean him out. And I think that's why Leo got his well on the way to being a champion of Ivic because he got Ivic's attention by how pissed off he got and what happened during that thread and how badly those people suffered under his hands. He's got this uh, penchant for justice. <laughs> Not necessarily what you would consider... Like, oh, that needs to be, um, somebody needs to go champion this cause or that cause. You're not really ever sure what cause he's going to pick. But when he picks one, it's like, oh, my God. Okay, so um, level one blight, I say you could probably be in a, a city for a season and there wouldn't be any problems. There'd be problems like isolated problems. But when you're talking about thousands of people and, you know, it also depends on the city. You couldn't be in a small city for a season if, with a level one blight. You know, if there was a thousand people, you know, Kalinor would be a bad place to be with blight because you would wipe out the Simon Estra fairly quickly. Um, a bigger city like Silurus, you could probably stay there with a level one blight with all the people that are there. I would say two seasons and after that you'd be stretching a little bit. Zeltivo probably won. Um, some of the smaller cities like Nika you know, even last time. Um, I know Murrow would like really suffer if somebody with Blight showed up. And then if you get the level two ranks, you start um, getting way up there in terms of the kind of damage you can do. Again, Silaris could probably handle you for a while. Um, Soltros would probably handle you too, but you, then again, uh, Renway, you're not, you're not Azure, so, you know, what can you do? You can't sneak in. They'll just kick you out or kill you because these are don't like the humans. It's funny about that, too, because they're like, yeah, you humans just bring in all kinds of problems. You destroyed our citadel. You destroyed our cities. We blame you for the Valtarian. Yeah, that was a zero, man. If Gillard ever gets them going, they're just going to be like a blight on the planet, I think. Um, so... Like, you would probably even do a lot of damage with a level one blight being down in the jungle in Falandar because remember, blight doesn't just affect people, it affects plants and animals. So, the more diversity you have around you, like um, if you're thinking about jungle biomes, it's just completely filled with life. So, if you camp like a day or two in one place, things are going to happen in that place and it's going to be nasty. But say if you moved up to Aventhal, where the biome is a lot you know, more like the desert or even Ekdal, you will have less of a problem. So basically Renmei is going to have to find a job where he moves around a lot. And uh, whatever that job is, I mean, you can even sort of write your own resume. And um, 
traveling historian, uh, traveling scholar. I don't know. You know, I don't know what Renmi really likes. He's like got the whole combat thing going on now, so he can pretty much survive in the wilderness, I imagine. But um, yeah, he seems like to also like a lot of contact with people. So, anyways, to recap, I should wrap this up. To recap, um, I think Vat is like super clever because you know he marks his people, and their job is to go out and thin people out because he thinks people are too populated. And the more people that die by his hand and the hand of the blight people, the healthier the overall population is. So Vat says he's doing a service to everybody. And he doesn't necessarily, you know, need to make sure that death is gentle. Um, some of his people are real bastards. But, um, and then the brilliant part is, is if they stay in one place too long, they're going to get killed. And if they move around in the wilderness and they don't have any skill, they're going to get killed. So it doesn't really matter at lower levels if he, um, you know, marks a lot of people. They'll, they'll die off anyways, naturally. People will find him. And it's not like you can hide it. it you have a visible gnosis mark. People can suspect things are happening. There's signs all over the place, especially if you say some, if you stay in one place longer than, you know, a season or so. And then, you know, so as people naturally select each other out. Plus, you know, if somebody is marked with a blight and they run across other blight people, and those other blight people are being stupid and drawing attention to themselves, then that puts them in danger. So, you know, blight people can take out blight people fairly easily. And they probably would. So then you have your first regulator is the blight people on the population. Your second regulator is the population on the blight people. And your third regulator is blight against blight. So um, it's just one of those things. I think that is one of the most interesting gods out there. And I think he could really use a champion. So like Renmei, if you're on that path or whatever, that's cool. Um, but the problem is, is you're going to have to show him that you're smarter than all the other followers out there. And if you want to get in contact with the Shroud, they'll find you. You just, they're just not that populous. And if, you know, you happen to be in a city where one's having, where they're having a gathering, you know, you'll know about it. You'll recognize other blighted members. And just as soon as you run across somebody else, you know, they'll probably fill you in on what's going on. Now, if you're in Zeltina for much longer, I can pretty much predict, and I would suggest to Luke, that he create a Shroud PC that comes and either kicks your butt or, you know, informs you that you need to move around and be a little smarter or else the Shroud are going to come get you. And, um, you know, because of the problems that you're causing in Zeltina, that's a real distinct possibility because you're pointing a big red arrow at Zeltiva and anybody that knows anything about that can probably um, figure it out fairly quickly. In, in fact, there's probably university people that if they have the lures and not if they go pick up a book and get the lures, you know, um, because they're taking out of character knowledge in character, but if they actually have a background in this or go about it in a way that's not a cheese ball factor, then they could probably figure out that there's probably that involved. How many times can I say probably? A lot. And um, in terms of the Andrikus pox, as far as I know, unless Jackalope has changed his mind or altered his plans, I can't tell you what that's about. Because that wouldn't be fair to the people that are in Thread that haven't read Cypress's coordination thread. And, um, but I can tell you for a fact, the Shroud are not involved. Um, now this coming season, we're going to have some really bad guys out on the Sea of Grass. And, um, you know, we've got powerful NPCs, or sorry, powerful PCs that are going to be going after them. So the equivalently powerful that are going to be doing some nasty things I'll drop some hints, leechers. <laughs> and um, once that gets going, the Dracus will have a whole nother set of problems. Um, hopefully, Jackalope will take some of my suggestions into account with the current Dracus that are playing. So they have some fun things to figure out how they're going to handle for this coming season. And um, yeah, hopefully they'll figure out the pox and get that taken care of. If they don't, I'm just sad because 
they should have enough clues out there in thread and in the news and listening to various other situations so they can figure out what's going on. Look, my dog just brought a ball. <laughs> I'm not going to play fetch with them while I'm making the video. But anyways, I should turn it off now. We're at 15 minutes. I hope that answers all your questions.